Great reward, it's got high risk. Jimbo Fisher and the Knowles will have to start fast against the Tide. Jimbo talks fast, but says they just have to keep up. Well, keeping up with Florida State under Fisher is a full-time job. The Knowles enter this season as one of the favorites to win the national championship. Since last season, Fisher sensed that his 2017 team would have the right blend of talent and maturity at key positions like quarterback to contend. So Fisher didn't just talk fast, he acted faster and demanded that the Knowles keep up. All right, Jimbo, I want to put this diplomatically. In the spring, you said you were, um, you were difficult with, your, with mm. your team. You were tough on them. Why so tough this particular spring? I don't think it was this particular spring, and, and I just see it over time. I think you have to be that way with your players because I think in today's society, we're not as tough as we used to be. I mean, the, the hard noses and toughness, everything is kids sit inside all day. They play computer games. They do now. They go play football and all that. But I think getting, football is still a game, no matter how skilled we become, it's played in pads. The ability to compete, learn how to compete, learn to have great toughness, and, and to deal with adversity and challenge them mentally, mentally and psychologically to understand how they got to stay in the moment to compete, no matter if they're success or failure. And I think you have to continually enhance those. And I did just a point in our program that I thought we had to go back and really get back to basics. And I, th I think, you know, I, I told myself we're going to do it every, every spring. I was at your practice last year, and you were optimistic about last season. But I remember you told me this year, 2017, mm -hmm. was a chance to be really special. Is that one of the reasons you push? Yeah, hard? it is. It is, and I, and I think our team was ready for it. And you know, and, and and last year I knew we were very. We had talent, but we had some guys in young, young guys in key positions that I think had to earn their way through some things. And I think we had to just dot those eyes, cross those T's, and I wasn't gonna allow it to happen again. You've talked a lot in the off season. It's hard to argue, and I don't know why anyone would. If the ACC right now is on top of college football, from an individual program over the last decade, it's been Alabama. So what's the significance of this opening game, Florida State and Alabama? Well, I think the game itself has got national ramifications, national championship ramifications, but I don't think it has to do with our league. I mean, that's, a great, that's the, two, the two of the marquee programs in, in those leagues that you want to match up and which you want to play and compete. But my statement was more not just over the year, over the last four or five years. You know, we've had two national champions over the last four years. We've played in that game. We've had three, three of those years we've had a team in it. We've won two Heismans. We've won, we're eight and three in playoff games and major six games during that time. Head-to-head -head matchup. We've had not just the, everybody says it's just the SEC. It's across college football. And I think those, listen, I coached in the SEC for 13 years. Mm -hmm. But I think the ACC has established itself as as good a conference as they were in football. Now, going back to the matchup between Alabama, that's not going to have any effect on Alabama and Florida State. We're going to go at it no matter what. <laughs> it didn't matter if we were in good conferences or bad conferences. They have great pride. We have great pride. We're the two winningest teams in college football over the last seven years. That's why they want us to play. And, and, and open it up that way. But, you know, it just happens to be that we're in two of the major conferences. But, you know, that'll be a great game. And I, but I think our conference has really established itself with the coaches, the influx of coaches, players. And, and as you see now, you don't see people leaving the ACC for jobs. They're destination mm -hmm. jobs. Coaches are staying for long periods of time. What's the ceiling for your team? Or maybe a better way to put it is what's the goal for this year's Florida State National team? championship. It is at Florida State all the time. Our expectations, our goals, and to, to you know, to what we want to achieve – at the end, as a goal is for a team is to be a national championship. What I want our team to be is the best possible, play the best possible football they can play all year long and get better as we go and develop a great identity and, and great character and chemistry amongst themselves to be the best they can be. Now, that's the ultimate goal is the national championship, but we got to create the ownership of the team, the culture of the team, so we can be successful in those regards. When we get to that opening game, uh, I'm going to be guilty of it. Our buddy, the Bear, Chris Felica, is going to put up some graphic. You know, Jimbo Fisher, Nick Saban. What is the significance to a coach of facing someone with whom he has a relationship or background or have uh, worked together and both have achieved success? What's the significance of that matchup to you? Well, I don't know if it's significance, but I, I think that, you know, you, you get to measure yourself as a competitor against Nick, who's had as much success as anybody in college football. And... You know, and I think it's not, I don't think it's and in your program and what you've learned. And when you respect someone for what they've achieved so much and what they've done, is you having the respect to compete against them at the highest level to bring out the best in you and the best in him. And I think at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's all about competition to me.
That's the way I look at it for our team. Not just between me and him. I, I think I could get him. He's 66. I'm 51. I still I got, I got 15 years. <laughs> I could get him, I think. Even though we did have noon. But see, we had that noontime basketball league all the time that we played on. Now, we were always on the same team. We were always – we won it every year. <laughs> if you went one-on-one with him in basketball, how would you take it? I, I, mean, I got 15 years on him, so I think I could get him. But we used to have some fun. We were always on the same team there. We were the champs every year we were down there. But, but, I, but I mean, you know, the competition level, knowing it, that you know – put it this way. When you put your team on the field, you know that other team that he's coaching is going to be extremely well prepared and ready to play, and you get to match up and do that. And, and the respect because of how you know him and how he does things, that, to me, that, that's the ultimate respect. That Fisher is heading into his eighth season at Florida State is a significant factor in why Ed Orgeron is heading into his first full season as head coach at LSU. At one time, the Tigers coveted Fisher. You know, it's not often that